Hello everyone, uh, I am Tanmay Das. I am from the Ohio State University. And I'm going to present this paper called Basic Backbone Assisted Successive Interference Cancellation. My co-authors are Wenji Zhao, Lu Chen, Professor Kannan Srinivasan, and Professor Prasun Sina. So at first, I would like to talk about the current trends in the Wi-Fi network. As you can see in this figure, uh, this website uh, tracks the Wi-Fi deplo deployment throughout the world. And since 2013, you can see that there is a 5x growth in the Wi-Fi deployment. Uh, then the devices that are currently being used to access the internet, they are slowly shrinking in size, like from uh, smartphones, smartwatches, smart glasses. And due to the smaller sizes, it is not possible to put multiple antennas on them. Uh, then the uplink traffic is uh, slowly uh, growing up due to the use of uh, social network, uh, online multiplayer gaming, and some video conferencing style app like uh, FaceTime and Skype. So to handle this uh, growth in the uplink traffic, uh, the current use of CSMA protocol that actually tries to emulate the TDMA protocol is not good enough. Because as you can see that when there are two clients, the throughput per clients goes down by a factor of two. Whereas when there are n clients, the throughput per clients goes down by a factor of n. So there are already some work proposed to handle this uh, high uplink throughput. So uh, one of them called BBN that uh, exploits the dense deployment of APs in the enterprise network. However, it requires synchronization among the APs. There is another set of work called Network MIMO. SAM and COMP are one of the examples of this Network MIMO. However, it requires very high backbone bandwidth because APs or base stations need to exchange samples among them. Then there is another set of works that combines information from multiple APs, which are no, uh, soft and epicenter are examples of them. Uh, but uh, during our experiment, we have shown that the improvement using these protocols are very small. And then there is also one work called interference alignment and cancellation, which requires multiple antennas at the clients. Uh, and then there is another work called symphony, which requires multiple transmission of the same packet. But in this case, we cannot select the data rate for each of the client which uh, hearts the throughput. So uh, our main objective is to design a new MAC protocol, which is scalable and which does not require high backbone bandwidth or multiple antennas at clients, or synchronization of time or frequency among clients or APs. So to achieve that goal, we have looked into different uh, aspect of the Wi-Fi network, which is called receiver diversity. So to explain that thing, we have take this small two cross two network. So if we use TDMA in this network, then in time slot one, client one will transmit its packet to AP one, and in time slot two, client two will transmit its packet to AP two. So we can, say the, we can say that the capacity is 20 units per slot as the channel capacity is linear with SNR when the SNR is very high. So now if we use SICK, then in time slot one, both client one and client two are going to transmit. And you can decode the packets at AP1 and AP2. We are just showing the case when you are decoding the packets at AP1. The case is similar for AP2. So you can decode the client one packet first, then subtract the this packet out, decoded packet. Then you can decode client two's packet. So in a sense, for both client one and client two gets 10 dB of SNR. So your capacity is still 20 units per slot. So there is no gain over TDM. However, uh, we can leverage the backbone that connects the two APs to improve the throughput. So in, in our protocol basic, both the clients again transmit uh, at the same time. So uh, at AP1, we decode the client's one packets. Then we send that decoded packet through the backbone to the AP2, where this packet is subtracted out. And then we decode the client two's packet. Now in this case, client two gets 20 dB of SNR. So we can say that the capacity is now 30 units per slot, so which is a 50% gain over TDMA. So to get a better understanding of our protocol, we did some trace-driven analysis. So we have assumed that the any data rates are possible and we can achieve perfect cancellation. So we have collected the traces from one of our first floor of one of our department building. There are 103 APs in that uh, floor. And we have created some small two cross two networks. 
And we have divided these networks into two categories. See, in one category, uh, both the clients at the highest SNR at the same AP. And in the another category, both the clients at the highest SNR at different APs. So in case when both the clients at the high SNR at the same AP, then we can get 1.4 times higher throughput than TDMA. And in the case when both the clients at the high SNR at two different APs, then we can get 1.6 times better throughput than TDMA. So we can say that the receiver diversity actually helps BASIC. Now to understand how the throughput scales for BASIC protocol, we have created some small three cross three and four cross four phone network. So in a three cross three network, the throughput is 2.1 times better than TDMA. And in a four cross four network, the throughput is four times, sorry, 2.6 times better than TDMA. So we can say that the throughput scales as the network size grows. Uh, now, what are the challenges to implement this protocol? So, uh, one challenge is to how you are going to determine which client to decode at which AP in which order, and what would be the data rate for each of the clients. Uh, and the another problem is that frequency offset correction, because we are uh, canceling out the, we are decoding the packet in one AP, but canceling out it in another AP. So, we need to be very sure that the frequency offset is very correct. Uh, to do that, we have used the decoded sample of the packets to get a better estimate of the frequency offset. Uh, however, due to the lack of time, I'm not going to discuss this method here. You can uh, look into the paper. So to get a better understanding of the decoding order, what is the problem with the decoding order? Uh, again, I have taken this example of this two cross two network. So in this network, I can decide to decode the client one at AP1 first, then I can decode client two at AP2, and we can get the total throughput using Shannon's capacity formula. Uh, then again, I can uh, decode client two at AP2, and then client one at AP1. And so there are many such possible combinations. So actually, for n clients, there are n factorial choices of de decode them. And for each of those choices, if there are m APs, then, then there are m to the power n different ways of decoding them. So for n clients and n APs, there are n factorial into m to the power n different decoding orders, so which is huge. So the goal is to find a decoding order that maximizes the total throughput. And I would also like to mention the moment we decide the decoding order, we can get the data rate for each of the client. So what is the solution? So we have found out that the finding out the optimum decoding order is a very hard problem. So we have gone for a greedy algorithm. However, even for a greedy algorithm, there are many possible choices. Like we can decide to decode the client with the highest SNR first, or we can decide the client that has the maximum interference across all the APs, or we can decide to decode the client that has the maximum SINR across all the APs. So, but in practice, we have seen that the maximum SINR based greedy algorithm works best. And we have compared the performance of this maximum SINR-based greedy algorithm with an exhaustive search-based greedy algorithm, which uh, goes through all possible decoding order and find out the best possible one. And if you see in this figure, our greedy algorithm only performs 6% worse than the best possible throughput. So, but we also have to consider some of the practical issues, like if we are going to maximize the throughput, then our fairness will, is going to degrade. And one more problem is that the Wi-Fi standard uh, can, can only support the discrete data rate. And due to the discrete data rate, it is not possible to schedule all the client in a single slot. So we have to select a subset of clients. So we need to modify our existing algorithm. And our existing algorithm looks like this. So our input is the SNR matrix, like what is the SNR for each of the client at different APs? And what is the past resource allocation? Like how many times a specific client gets to transmit this packet? So then we sort the clients according to the past resource allocation. And then, then we select each client from the sorted list one by one. We add them to a uh, list called L. And then we try to find out if we can decode all the clients in this list using our maximum SINR greedy algorithm or not. If we can decode, and if the current throughput is better than the existing throughput, then we update our maximum throughput and update the decoding order. If we can't, then we remove the client C from the list L, and the process goes like that. 
So the output of this algorithm is the decoding order as well as the data rate for each of the clients. So now I would like to talk about our experimental setup. So we have done experiment with USRPs in lab. We have also used the orbit test base that has many USRPs in already installed. Uh, we have compared our performance with TDMA, SIG, Epicenter, and SOFT. So in our two cross two network, the performance of SIG is, uh, performance improvement of SIG is very small. However, the performance improvement of BASIC is quite large. So in case of, a, as I have told you before, like in a same AP scenario where both the clients are the highest SNR at the same AP, then the performance improvement is 1.2 times over TDMA. And when both the clients are the highest SNR at two different APs, then the performance improvement is 1.5 times over TDMA. So, so again, it corroborates our earlier findings like basic benefits from the receiver diversity. Then in our three cost three network, uh, we have evaluated the performance of basic, epicenter, soft, and sick. So in case of uh, sick, epicenter, and soft, the performance improvement is very small. However, in case of basic, the, again, the performance improvement is 1.5 times over TDM. Uh, we have also done some simulation just to simulate a very large network. And we have used some uh, experiment, uh, traces that we have collected during our experiment, like what is the SNR distribution for different clients, what is the residual interference, like even after we cancel out a packet, there is still some residual interference remains, uh, and what is the packet error rate distribution. And we have compared the performance of TDMA, Symphony, and our protocol. So uh, in this uh, figure, you can see that the, as the network size grows, the throughput of basic increases, and it could be as high as five, five times of TDMA. And in case of fairness, both the TDMA, Symphony, and our protocol almost perform similarly. So in summary, we can say that we have proposed a MAC protocol that uses uh, the inherent receiver diversity that is already available in the Wi-Fi network and takes advantage of the Ethernet backbone. Uh, this protocol, in this protocol, the throughput scales almost linearly as the number of nodes increases in the network. We do not need any tight synchronization among the clients or at the APs. There is a very low backbone overhead because we only exchange the decoded packet, not the samples. And there is no requirement for multiple antennas at the client or at the AP side. So thank you. Uh, I would like to take your questions now.